So, you're living in Missouri or PCSing to White Man Air Force Base or moving to Warrensburg and you don't know what to do in this state. <gasps> you don't know where to take your kids. I can help you with that. Today, friends, we're gonna talk about 10 really cool museums in Missouri that you can take your family to. Stay tuned. And don't forget to like and subscribe right down below because I make a new video every single week and you're gonna to wanna to get notified. Also, if you're coming here, if you have questions, my contact information and my email address are right down there. I talk to people from all over the world who are coming here and I love it. So if you have any questions, give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email. I love talking to people. Today, friends. I know that was super enthusiastic, but I really like making these videos, so you're just gonna have to deal with it. Today, we are talking about places to go in Missouri. Specifically, I found 10 really cool, kind of weird, <laughs> museums throughout the state of Missouri that could be a fun little weekend trip, or just like a short getaway. I don't know. Check them out, they're pretty cool. Starting off, and these are in no particular order, they're all really interesting and very different, though I will say number one is my favorite. So stick around and see what number one is. Starting off, we have number 10. Number 10 is the Glore Psychiatric Museum in St. Joseph. Ooh, it just sounds spooky. <laughs> so the original outbuilding of this museum actually used to serve as the city's prison. <gasps> and there's so many reports that it's probably haunted. Now, what's left of this really cool building is basically four floors full of really cool things that serve to show the last 130 years of the state's psychiatric treatment facilities. Or should I say, the state's lunatic asylum, because that's what it was called back then, was the state's lunatic asylum. So these four stories just house everything having to do with this old lunatic asylum. So the Glore Psychiatric Museum is actually dedicated to George Glore, who spent 40 plus years of his life searching and replicating different treatments that he found throughout history to try to help his patients. Apart from things like the wheel or scary things like lobotomy instruments and all that kind of thing, there's also really beautiful pieces like artwork created by different patients over the years. So all in all, it's kind of a mix of fascinating fascinating and a fascinating but kind of scary, slightly sad delve into the history of mental illness in our state. But it's a very cool museum and if you want to go see a possibly haunted kind of creepy museum about the state lunacy asylum, <laughs> you should definitely check out the Glore Psychiatric Museum in St. Joseph. Moving on to number nine. This one's a weird one, guys. This museum is the only one of its kind, literally in the world. It's an independence museum, and it is the Hair Museum, specifically Lila's Hair Museum in Independence, Missouri. Felix, stop it. Shh. I'm trying to do a video. Okay. Anyway. So what we have is a collection of over 600 pieces of all sorts of things, and they're all made out of human hair. <laughs> I'm not joking, everything is made out of human hair. Now this was actually a big thing back in the Victorian era to wear brooches or pins or things of that nature to remind you of your loved ones. And then it just continued on, and the person who started this museum actually started collecting those pieces of art history, but then expanding on it. So now basically she has a giant museum filled with things made of human hair. So actually the museum's oldest piece was made in 1680 and it was donated to a museum, to the museum by a family in Scotland. So some of these pieces are incredibly old, hundreds and hundreds of years old. And that's the oldest piece all the way up to most more recent pieces. So. If you're looking for kind of a, a weird out there museum and you can say that you went to a museum and there's only one of its kind in the whole world, check out Lila's Hair Museum in Independence, Missouri. Moving on, number eight, we have the Jesse James Museum. 
As most people probably know, Jesse James was a super notorious outlaw back in the Wild Wild West days. And when he was done with his outlawing, he decided to become more of a family man. And he decided to come home to his home in St. Joseph and just kind of settle down. Unfortunately, there was a $10,000 bounty on his head and he was shot and killed. So this museum is actually his home and it's really cool. It's just a really cool part of history where you can go and check out Jesse James' home and take some pictures in front of the house of an American icon and outlaw. Everyone wants to be an outlaw these days anyway. <laughs> okay, okay, moving on. Number seven. Number seven is right here in Kansas City, Missouri, and it is the National Museum of Toys and Miniatures. So this was actually established back in 1882. And this museum boasts one of the finest collections of toys and miniatures in the entire world. As of a couple years ago, their entire collection numbered over 72,000 toys and miniatures. So it's just kind of like, mind-blowing how many things they have. So it's really cool. So if you wanna go see some really cool small toys, go check out that museum in Kansas City. On a side note, I find miniature things fascinating. <laughs> like when they take giant structures like the White House and then make them teeny tiny, but they still have all the different rooms and like you can look in there. It just, it's really cool, but it also creeps me out just a little bit, like that one movie with Matt Damon where everyone was really small, but I digress. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> we are moving on to number six. This one is near and dear to my heart because I read all of these books growing up and watched the TV show. That is the Laura Ingalls Wilder Museum. Woo! So that is here in Missouri. It is in Mansfield, Missouri. And this is the home that she shared with her husband Alonzo while she was writing all of the Little House on the Prairie books. This is just a really cool, it's a small museum, it's based out of her home, and it's just, if you love those books growing up and you see it, it's just like, oh, this is where it happened. <laughs> I love those books so much. Also in that museum, there's her garden, which is still kept up. She had a, a big passion for gardening. And then there's also smaller sections that are devoted to her daughter, Rose, and her husband, Almondo. So it's just, if you, have her books as part of your childhood history. It's just a really cool experience. Next, we're gonna travel down south a little bit and we're going down to St. Louis for the World Chess Hall of Fame Museum. Now, if some of y'all have watched that more recent Netflix documentary series, docu-series, is it a docu-series? It's not real, but it's pretty cool. Queen's Gambit, it's all about chess. Well, this is a museum all about chess. So there are things signed by the world famous chess player, Bobby Fischer, and just a whole bunch other things chess related. I'm not all that into chess, but my husband's really good at chess. <laughs> he keeps trying to teach me and I'm like, honey, I don't have the patience. <laughs> Some other cool things in this museum, there are chess boards and pieces that are over 500 years old. So there's different chess boards from just so many different centuries. So it's pretty cool to see all the different types of chess boards they have. And basically everything chess is in this museum. So if you like chess, you should probably go to St. Louis. Now we're moving on to number four. So number four is down in Branson, Missouri, and it's the Titanic Museum. Now it's kind of macabre to go to an entire museum based off a giant ship full of people that died, but it's a pretty cool museum. Uh, it's basically in a giant ship. I mean, if anyone's been to Branson, you know everything there is about just awe. <laughs> they do everything over the top in Branson. And this museum is definitely does not fall short. It has really cool dioramas almost that you can walk through and experience what it was like to be on the Titanic, what the different rooms and bunkhouse and areas looked like. You can get cool things like, you know, your Titanic passport book, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just a really cool museum and it's a really cool mix of history and a little bit of spectacle because it's Branson. So if you're down in Branson and you wanna go to a cool kind of creepy museum, check out the Titanic Museum. Number three on our list is about all things dog. <laughs> I love dogs. So it's also down in St. Louis. 
So if you're down there to look at the World Chess Champion Museum, you might as well stop at the American Kennel Museum of the Dog. Or yes, the American Kennel Club Museum of the Dog. I almost said it right. So this museum is about everything dog, over 700 pieces all about dogs, from pictures to uh, paintings to carvings to sculptures, everything dog related is in this museum. So if you are a fan of the goodest boys, check out this museum. I actually really wanna go to this museum because I love dogs, so I think it would be fun. Moving on. Now we're getting close, we're down to number two, which is in Bon Terre, Missouri, and that is the Space Museum. <laughs> Space. It is uh, Earl Murrens. He is the curator and founder of the Space Museum down in Bon Terre, Missouri. And he loves talking about everything space related. So this museum opened to, in 2005 and it's basically just his giant collection of everything space, NASA, rocket related. And the really good thing the really cool thing about this museum is he actually encourages his visitors to be able to touch certain things. So, you know, rocks that were moon rocks or parts of rockets or things like that. So it's not just cool things that you see, but you can actually touch, like you can touch things that have been to outer space or the moon, and that's really cool. Another cool thing is that whenever he is there at the museum, he will be your personal guide. So it's a really personalized experience. They also have, you know, a one hour audio guide to just take you through the museum. But having him there to just tell where he got each piece, where it's been, what part of outer space it was in, it's just kind of a really fun and cool experience. So if you love outer space, check out that museum. We are down to number one, folks. Last but definitely not least, this is probably my favorite museum in Missouri just about. It is the City Museum. Now, when I say the City Museum, you're like, what, is it a museum about cities? No. This is a 600,000 square foot building. It used to be in this old shoe factory and it is full of an enchanted cave system, an indoor jungle gym, all these awesome crazy slides that go from the top to the bottom. It has an aquarium. It has all these really cool science things that you can like touch and be a part of and experiment with. And it's just really the coolest museum I've ever been to. For adults or kids, it's amazing. And that's not even I didn't even tell you about the roof. On the roof, there's a 1940s Ferris wheel and so many more things. Like this is just one like Willy Wonka type Wonderland museum, but without the candy and you know, the kids dying. <laughs> no, no people turning into giant blueberries at this place, but it is really cool. You can spend hours and hours and hours there and go multiple times and never experience all of it. So if you are looking for something to keep your family 100% engaged all day, check out the City Museum in St. Louis. Wow, I hope that through this video, you have at least thought, I think I'll go check out one of those museums. Or maybe you're just like, gosh, Eva, pick better museums. Now I didn't do, there's so many museums in the state of Missouri. I'll probably do more, more videos on more museums because there's really cool museums in this state, but there are so many to choose from. So here are my first 10 and I hope you like them. I hope you like this video. I make a new one every single week and you should probably hit the like and subscribe button because you're gonna wanna get notified. Also, if you're coming to Warrensburg, if you're PCSing to Whiteman Air Force Base or moving to Missouri and you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out and give me a call, send me a text, send me an email. I love talking people. Until next time.